Michael Lowry. Uh, although there is a major focus on travel, there is a sector of the industry that is facing extinction unless they receive urgent funding. Ireland's 190 licensed travel agents are currently watching their business fail, and unlike the other SMEs, they have received little or no assistance. I have been in correspondence with you about this issue. Industry projections estimate that as a result of the advice not to travel abroad, travel agents overall will lose £120 billion of projected earned income, which comes largely from commissions and service fees. Without the benefit of TWSS, many travel agents would already have closed their doors as turnover is down by 90%. All earned income to date from advanced bookings is handed back in refunds, resulting in negative trading. Advanced bookings are practically at zero, so businesses are looking down a black hole towards the rest of 2020 and for the first quarter of 2021. Travel agents earn income when consumers pay the balances. Unlike the domestic tourism industry, they cannot benefit to the extent from staycations. Outbound travel agents have no fallback. However, outbound and inbound tourism rely on each other to generate passengers for airlines to justify operations. Multinationals and SMEs depend on travel agents to properly manage their costs. Outbound travel agents also sell European holidays in the UK market and bring meetings, conferences, sports groups and a host of other visitors into Ireland. Travel agents are not arguing against government advices, but it is arguing and concerned about the unintended consequences that are putting them in jeopardy. Greater assistance is urgently required. Travel agents were excluded from applying for the online retail scheme in the first round of grants as they are considered as only providing a leisure service. Travel agents should not be excluded from the upcoming round of financial supports for, for SMEs or for, from applying for certain grants that may evolve due to a misconception of the level and type of businesses they provide. In summary, Tarnishta, the government advice is not to travel. Thousands of people who follow that advice have cancelled flights and holidays. Most of these cancellations are package holidays which include flights, transfers and accommodation. We have a ludicrous situation that under a European Union directive, the travel agent is legally responsible for the refund of the entire package. This is simply not financially sustainable. It's a travesty and incredibly unfair to expect travel agents to shoulder the burden of this financial outlay. It will force them into liquidation. Ironically, the travel agent bonding system to protect consumers when agencies collapse only becomes active and effective after a travel agency goes into liquidation. The travel agent and thousands of consumers across Ireland are caught stranded in the middle between a European Union directive and government travel advice. So, Tanishta, this is a matter that needs urgent attention and correction. Um, uh, thanks very much, Deputy. Um, I had a chance to uh, speak briefly to the President of the Irish Travel, Travel Agent Association on a Zoom call the other day, and uh, Minister Nocton, whose responsibilities cover aviation and international travel, will be meeting with the Association uh, in the next couple of days to explore what uh, specific supports we may be able to put in place um, for them. Um, about 3,000 people across the country work in travel agents and tour operators. Uh, we all know these businesses. They're largely locally owned, uh, often family owned. Um, they tend to be an important feature on our high streets. Um, while many people now book online, uh, lots of people uh, still use travel agents and tour operators, and that includes inbound as well as outbound uh, travellers. Um, we want to make sure that they survive uh, and that they're able to uh, do well again uh, when we get past uh, this pandemic. Um, they do benefit from a lot of the actions the government has already put in place. For example, uh, the wage subsidy scheme. Uh, they would almost all benefit from that because their turnover has gone down uh, by so much. Uh, we also brought in the refund credit note scheme uh, so that people would get vouchers or credit notes rather than cash refunds um, in an effort to... Uh, assist the sector so that it didn't collapse, although people are ultimately entitled to the cash uh, if that's what they want. Um, they have had their commercial rates waived uh, and um, some are eligible for the restart grant once they get started again. Uh, and we will 
uh, see what else can be done, both in terms of the July stimulus uh, that's happening uh, next week, uh, and also um, if there's anything in particular we can do for the sector, and that's what Minister Nocto will be exploring with them. Uh, you have written to me, uh, as you said, about the online retail scheme that does fall directly under my responsibility, as it's uh, an Enterprise Ireland scheme. Um, that funding is all drawn down now. Uh, but if we are able to reopen the scheme, uh, I do take your point. I think you make a valid point that they should be included in that too. Laurie, Thank you. Thank you. could I raise a separate issue, uh, but uh, connected? We have thousands of people in Ireland at the moment who booked flights with the airlines to travel. On government advice, they have taken the decision not to travel. We now have a situation where airlines have had the use of people's money for a considerable period of time. Because the flights are not cancelled, they're not able to recoup their money. And when they go to change the date, the only option they have is to change the date. When they go to change the date forward, the airlines is charging them as much as they paid for the original ticket. Now, this is t total exploitation of a dominant position by the airlines, and I would ask uh, Tarnish to, that you'd intervene with the airlines and ask, allow a situation to develop where airlines only charge the, the, a nominal fee for changing the date forward. Thank you, Deputy Larry Tarnish, to conclude. Thanks, uh, thanks, Deputy. I'll certainly take that up in my uh, engagement interaction with, with the major airlines. Um, Government advice really since the middle of March has been to uh, avoid non-essential travel off the island, but I appreciate that there are some people who would have booked long before March uh, who now find themselves uh, in a very difficult position. Uh, just in relation to international travel advice, um, what I should restate is that um, government advice is that nobody should engage in non-essential travel off the island, um, and anyone uh, coming into the island um, whether it's for essential or non-essential reasons, uh, should not quarantine, uh, but restrict their movements uh, for 14 days. That's staying at home uh, and only going out for essential supplies uh, and for exercise. I see the term quarantine self-isolate used incorrectly um, and regularly. The advice is to uh, restrict your movements for 14 days. And that's for anyone coming into the island with a very small number of exceptions, such as pilots, uh, transport workers, cabin crew and diplomats. Um, however, on Monday we will have a green list of countries, uh, a list of countries with a incidence of the coronavirus that is similar to ours, and we will be able to update our advice in relation to those countries, uh, and that will be different from the general advice uh, for Thank countries you, not on the green list. Thank you.